Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today I want to talk about how Ken Griffin just mocked retail investors and how there's a few things that Ken Griffin says that tells me that Kenny Boy is still holding his full AMC and GameStop short positions and that he's delusionally convinced himself that retail are about to sell their shares any second now. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So, Unusual Wells tweeted saying just in, Ken Griffin has said the retail rally of January 2021 that resulted in the bankruptcy of Melvin Capital was not a good moment in the history of American capital markets. So first, let's hear what Ken Griffin has to say, and then I want to point out the exact things that Ken Griffin says and the way that he says them that tells me that he is still holding his full AMC and GameStop short position. You that mean the, the whole sort of meme stock th phenomenon yeah, meme that, stock. that got Gabe yeah. in trouble in GameStop yeah. last year? Yeah. It's probably a moment in time. You know, we, I mean, replay the history. You've got these, this enormous stimulus program from the federal government sending checks to, to tens of millions of American households. And a fair number of those households did not need the cash. They put it into the stock market. And, and people were looking for connection. They were looking for something to be involved in. You had the rise of the Wall Street bets and the whole Reddit phenomena. And I, I don't want to say our stock market devolved into entertainment, but there was certainly an entertainment um, dimension that came into play with money that, that was in some sense just dropped out of the skies into people's wallets. And, and they took a run at the stock market and, and GameStop and AMC and dozens of other meme stocks. I like to think it was a moment in time. So I like to think that's the case. It's not how capital formation works best. And frankly, a lot of it came from a place that I don't think it was very healthy, which is like, let's try to you know, take a firm like Melbourne and, and put them into bankruptcy. Like, great. So you, you basically help wipe out the pension plans of teachers. You feel good about that? It's like Gabe's money that you're taking down. You're taking down the money of a pension plan that belongs to a teacher. So firstly, I want to say I think it's bad that, again, we're seeing this narrative that retail investors are supposedly responsible for the current fall in the stock market. Ken Griffin is saying that we, the retail investors, are solely responsible for teachers losing their pension money. Nothing to do with Gay Plotkin making over-leveraged bets and using illegal tactics to create synthetic shares to illegally short companies, American companies, into bankruptcy. Ken Griffin obviously doesn't think it's Gabe Plotkin's fault for making those illegal over-leveraged bets to try and destroy US American companies to benefit himself and to pay small dividends to those investors. I guess technically Gabe Plotkin isn't making money for himself per se, he's making money for the fund, which is obviously meaning that investors are making money. But don't forget that Gabe Plotkin takes a massive performance fee off the top, and therefore he's basically destroying American companies for himself. But obviously Ken Griffin and I'm sure a number of other hedge funds don't seem to see any problem whatsoever with taking risky, illegal, over-leveraged bets to destroy American companies. But what I do think is very important is the fact that Ken Griffin said and the way he said that the whole retail meme stock phenomena is just a point in time. A point in time or a moment in time is obviously something that will shortly pass. And therefore, Ken Griffin believes that retail investors standing up for shorted stocks is something that's just a moment in time that will likely pass very, very shortly. I think the way Ken Griffin said this and smiled to me means that he has absolutely convinced himself that retail investors will soon be selling their AMC and GameStop shorts, and then Ken Griffin can close his short positions with very little money lost. Right now, Ken Griffin is obviously happy to hold his AMC and GameStop short positions, as he believes that retail investors are only a moment in time, and they'll pass soon, and then he can safely close his short positions and won't lose any money. But obviously, I'm sure, as you and I very well know, that retail investors and standing up for companies like AMC and GameStop is not a moment in time that's going to pass shortly, and retail investors are absolutely not selling their shares anytime soon, especially not for $10 per share or $100 per share in the case of GameStop. As I'm sure you'll all reiterate, the retail investors aren't selling their AMC shares until we see at least $100, $500, $1,000, $2,000, $5,000, $10,000 dollars per share, or maybe even higher. And therefore, I think that Ken Griffin has another thing coming if he thinks that retail investors are about to sell their AMC and GameStop shares very, very shortly. 
Now, I also wanted to go through this tweet from Market Rebellion that I don't think is very accurate. Firstly, Market Rebellion tweeted saying that Melvin Capital has liquidated all of their positions. Now guys, before I dive any further, I want to talk about something special. People like you and I know the stock market is crashing at the moment and we're looking for investments that are entirely uncorrelated. Maybe you like old whiskies and wines, or maybe you're more of a geek for rare watches, or maybe you've got a keen eye for fine art, but you don't have a casual $80 million laying around for this beautiful painting by Claude Monet. Luckily, a new platform called Masterworks has emerged, which is making investing in fine art a possibility. Their mission is to democratize the art market, meaning you can now own a small share in over 80 paintings, ranging from a Picasso, a Banksy, a painting by Andy Warhol, and many others. Now you may say, Tom, why invest in art? And in case you didn't know, art tends to perform well over the long term, outpacing the S&P 500 by 164% between 1995 and 2021. Art also historically outperforms stocks during periods of high inflation and recession, which is great news considering the stock market looks to be crashing right now. Masterworks is also super easy to use. All you have to do is sign up, select an art piece that you think would appreciate in value, and then wait until Masterworks sells the art piece at auction. Alternatively, you can always trade your shares on the secondary market. And so far, Masterworks has sold three paintings, each returning over 30% net IRR, which is internal rate of return to investors. So what are you waiting for? If you want to invest in fine art, then be sure to follow the link down in the description below and sign up for Masterworks now. Now, the first reason I don't think this is accurate is because in Gabe Plotkin's letter the other day, he said that he would be liquidating his positions through the whole of May and the whole of June. If he's told his investors that he will be liquidating his positions over a two month period, he then wouldn't turn around and liquidate the entire fund in one singular day. I think this is something that's posted by Market Rebellion to try and convince those retail investors like you and I that Melvin Capital have somehow closed out of their AMC shorts and not caused the AMC squeeze. And therefore, I personally don't think this statement is accurate. I don't think Melvin Capital have closed out of their positions, but I also wanted to touch on what Hang Loose has said in his reply and why Melvin Capital may have just transferred their AMC and GameStop shorts. Angloose replied saying Melvin Capital has actually transferred all of their short positions into a bigger short fund that is still actively shorting meme stocks. There, I fixed it for you. Now this is also something I touched on the other day. Obviously if Citadel transferred their AMC and GameStop short positions into Melvin Capital, there's nothing that stops Melvin Capital from transferring their shorts into other funds. Obviously, it's going to be difficult for Melvin Capital to find a fund stupid enough to take on their toxic liabilities and their massively over leveraged GameStop and AMC short positions. But obviously, if there's a bigger hedge fund that is still actively shorting those meme stocks, whether it's 0.72, Susquehanna, or many others that currently hold short positions in GameStop and AMC, or put positions in GameStop and AMC, then it's very, very viable that Melvin Capital absolutely could transfer their short positions. Obviously, if 0.72 are also holding billions of synthetic shorts, then they won't want Melvin Capital to cover their short positions and would likely happily take on Melvin's short portfolio to avoid the full short hedge fund market liquidation. But even if Melvin Capital do transfer their synthetic short positions onto another larger short hedge fund, I don't think it will be long until we see more and more and more hedge funds being liquidated and forced to cover their positions. I think it's only a matter of time until all of these short positions are transferred into one singular hedge fund that ends up being liquidated, going bankrupt and causing the AMC squeeze. And now in terms of the wider market, Hoz has tweeted saying the Fed is determined to push the market lower and there is a reason for that. He said a stock market crash brings inflation down significantly and he said it worked like a charm back in 2008. Don't fight the Fed. If we look at this chart, we can see that in 2008, the S&P 500 fell significantly, but at the same time, the inflation rate in 2008 also fell significantly as well. Right now, obviously the market is very, very high. It seems to have topped out. And since December of 2021, it has been falling. And at the same time, inflation is ridiculously high, significantly higher than in 2008. Therefore, they need to bring down inflation. So how can they bring down inflation? by crashing the stock market. 
and also one of Guggenheim's top employees warns of a summer of pain. He thinks the Nasdaq could plunge 75% and the S&P 500 could also skid 45% from both of their respective tops. Guggenheim's chief investment officer said the carnage playing out in the US stock market on Wednesday is likely an amuse-bouche compared with the devastation on the menu for the bulls in the coming months and the coming years. The prominent CIO on Wednesday said he envisioned the possibility of a dreadful summer and fall for stock market investors, one in which the Nasdaq falls 75% from its peak. And he said it's going to look like the collapse of the internet bubble in 1999 and the early 2000s. But what's driving his pessimism? He fears the Federal Reserve has made it abundantly clear that it's aiming to continue raising those interest rates, despite the possibility that it could result in ruction in equity markets and elsewhere. And he said what's clear to me is there is no market put. And I think we're all waking up to that fact now. The CIO was alluding to the so-called Federal Reserve put option, which is shorthand for the belief the US central bank will rush in to rescue tanking markets. Now that approach has been denied by previous Fed chairs and the CIO for Guggenheim also doesn't believe the Fed will come to the rescue. Now on top of that, Jeremy Grantham also sees the Nasdaq and the S&P 500's drop to double based on what it's currently fallen so far. AKA Jeremy Grantham sees the Nasdaq crashing by 60% and the S&P 500 crashing by around 40% as well. Now obviously again, that's fairly similar to the CIO of Guggenheim, so it looks like they're sharing similar ideas of the Nasdaq falling by over 50, even over 60%. And on top of that, CNN has said that most CEOs are currently bracing for a recession. Now, I think this just goes to show how bad the next six to 12 months are actually going to be. If most CEOs of major companies and even CEOs of smaller companies are already bracing for a bad recession, I can't imagine the stock market is going to fare too well. And obviously, as we all know, as the stock market continues to crash, it means that more and more hedge funds are going to be inching ever closer to that liquidation point, just like Melbourne Capital has seen over the last few days. And when more and more of these hedge funds end up being liquidated, it will cause the AMC squeeze. Riz also tweeted saying Credit Suisse's financial rating has been downgraded to a triple B plus from an A minus. He said that Wall Street banks are illiquid, over leveraged and super scared. And the article says that Credit Suisse has received its second rating downgrade this week, adding further pressure to the Swiss lender, which has been under fire over a series of losses and scandals. Fitch downgraded Credit Suisse's long-term issuer default rating from A- down to a triple B+, now suggesting that Credit Suisse is more likely to go bankrupt. Again, I think if major banks like Credit Suisse are being downgraded and Fitch are suggesting that these banks are more likely to go default, it just shows that a recession is absolutely just around the corner. So guys, be sure to leave a comment down below and ding that notification bell, because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.